All right. So in the last video, we ended up adding MongoDB persistence. So at that point, we were simply retrieving um, posts from MongoDB. Uh, we created a collection called posts and we, are, uh, we were retrieving posts from that. Now the problem with that is that we were inserting those posts manually by running MongoDB uh, client. And so that's obviously not the best way to um, insert data. So let's uh, let's go. Let's improve on that. So once again, this is Sapper single page application, and uh, we have got a single page application working, uh, showing some uh, static data as well as showing some dynamic data coming out of, of MongoDB. But now what we want to do is insert that dynamic data, the content into MongoDB using this application. So let's get started. Um, first, we will have to uh, create a post endpoint. So the post endpoint will be here under blog index.json.js. So we have a get endpoint. Similarly, we can create a post endpoint. So all we do is just copy this, make a copy of this, and uh, instead of async function get, we have async function post. Uh, we will connect to the database like before, uh, but we will uh, get the uploaded post. So we say const post equal to request.body. Now the problem is request.body is doesn't work unless you have a body parser installed and uh, body parser uh, specifically the JSON handler. So none of this is going to work. We will make it work. Uh, so first uh, we got the post then we say okay db dot collection uh, posts and then we insert the post into it okay and uh, then that returns you a result and that result most importantly you have to await on that result without awaiting of course you're not getting appropriate response and then finally you json.stringify and uh, convert that result into a JSON string. All this is okay, but it's not going to work unless you add body parser. So let's do that. Um, yarn add body parser. Now, now that we have body parser in place, what we have to do is we have to open server.js and in there inject the middleware for body parser. And the way we do that is import body parser from body dash parser. And next what we do is, oh, we are using single quotes, so let's use single quotes here as well. And um, next what we do is we, just before sapper, we say uh, get the JSON middleware from body parser. So this is what will allow us to parse JSON. Let's save it. And just for good measure, we will restart the server from scratch because if we don't do that, then new node modules may not be fully recognized. So let's, uh, let's see if this works. So the way to test it is uh, curl. Let's execute a post request and the data that we are going to post, but before that, let's say content type is equal to application JSON. So I'm just simulating a form post um, or a RESTful uh, post. And now the data is going to be um, this, and we will post to local post 2000, and uh, this is going to be blog.json okay, so that's where we are posting now let's give it uh, the post object it will be title 
since we have test one and test two, let's create a test three. And the C, the slug is going to be test three. And the HTML body is can be anything, but we will just use um, yeah something uh, italic. So. That's it. That's all. Let's post and let's do curl minus Vs. All right. So this was a bad request. It was not accepted. Why was it not? Let's check the there. I don't know if it has received. So let's go back and figure out what exactly is wrong with this request. Unexpected token P in JSON. Okay. Uh, at position whatever so unexpected token t oh yes of course uh, json is not valid uh, json is not same as javascript i have to quote these keys so let's do that Format the JSON property. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, successful. You see result OK1 and uh, it's been inserted. So if I now refresh this, I have test 3. Great. So simply by adding body parser as a middleware in server.js and adding a post method, post function rather, in in the index.json.js of blog service, we are able to create a, an endpoint that creates a um, post. Now the only problem is end users should not be using curl to post it. They should have a UI. So let's do that. We will add a form at the bottom of our uh, blog index page. So let's go into index.swell and add a form there. So let's say form. Uh, we don't, we're not going to express an action in there. So form and we will have input type text of, and then we want to specify a placeholder which will be title and then let's give a line break then another input and this will be the slug let me just close this input so yeah. and then placeholder is slug let's give a line break again and then finally text area and the placeholder will be uh, some HTML and uh, let's close the text area. All right, so once you do this, let's see if we get a, an okay. So we got some kind of a UI. This obviously doesn't look very good. So let's make it look a little bit better by adding yarn add bootstrap. So we will add bootstrap to our project. Hmm. Oops, sorry, I misspelled bootstrap. Okay. All right, so now, um, now that we have bootstrap added, we, all we have to do is uh, import, import, and if you go into bootstrap uh, directory under node modules, you will see that there is a dist CSS bootstrap.min.css so that that is what we want to add so copy this and import that oops import 
bootstrap test css bootstrap .css. once you do that you can start using bootstrap classes and uh, uh, let's see if I can use uh, class form control let's add it to both of them all three of them are so that improves okay yeah that improves quite a bit as you can see uh, so let's let's stick with that there's more we can do about it but let's stick with that let's also add a button so button um, submit I guess and, and let's make the type submit and uh, class will be btn and btn primary okay save it and you got a button there cool uh that's a reasonable looking form my uh, main concern is how do we convert this form into a restful post so you say on submit we have a handler and this will be handle submit but since you don't want a full page reload and a full page submission you have to say prevent default here and uh, only with prevent default will you will you be able to prevent the full submission of the form let's create this form, uh, function called handle submit so create a function called handle submit and um, this handle submit is going to create a post and then send it as a post HTTP post. So first we have to bind these inputs. Let's bind the input say bind colon value of the input is bound to um, title. Similarly, the value of this input is will be bound to something and then the Okay, so let's call this uh, HTML. Let's call this plug. Okay, so now we have three variables. Let's create these three variables. And the way we do that, we say let uh, title is one input is equal to null. Then second one will be plug. That will that be null too. And the third one will be um, HTML. That's not as well. So once you have these three things, you can create a post from it. It's a say const post equal to you know, title plug HTML. Okay. And uh, next thing we do is we post. So how do we post it? We say um, await fetch and the URL we are posting to is uh, remember we posted to where did we post? We posted to uh, to blog.json this place right? So that's where we will post it here as well. So slash blog.json and then the options that we pass in will be um, method is going to be post and headers will be content type application json and then finally the body of the request is going to be JSON dot stringify post right so these are the things only problem is uh, JavaScript does not like me using await in this situation uh, that's because await can be used only if your function is async so let's make it async async function and then we just assign this const result or 
Yeah, sure. That's just a response. Response. And then if response dot OK, then parse it. And then we'll say const result equal to uh, response dot json. We should await that as well. And then finally, eh, we can do a lot of things, but we can just console it, log it. And so log result is result. Let's see if this works. Okay, so this is where we are posted. Uh, let's take a look. So far, no errors. Let's give it a try. Let's create test four, log test dash four, and then put some HTML in here. We we'll put uh, uh, line one, and then the break, line break, and then line two. Let's see if this works. Now we should probably inspect and look at the network log. Let's hit submit. Hmm, looks like there's a 200. We performed a post and we got this and the response that we got was pretty reasonable, yeah. It has posted and uh, now if I reload the blog, there it is, test four. We just posted. Now there's a lot more to do. We have to find a way to refresh this list upon post. We also need to clear out uh, the values of, of title and slug and HTML, but you still get the idea. Uh, it's, I think it, this is one of the easiest way to create single page applications where all you had to do was uh, pipe prevent default modifier, just add a modifier called prevent default and in handle submit, uh, you, you just, uh, in your inputs, you're binding the values to these different JavaScript variables. And in handle submit, you simply use those variables to build your post and then perform the fetch with HTTP method post. Uh, and on, on the server side, you simply have to add a post function. This is pretty easy, I would say. So in the next uh, subsequent ones, we will do more advanced things and uh, put more real world applications in our Zapper uh, application and real world features. So as you saw that um, we were, this is what we were doing, you know, we were uh, restful routes we were creating by just adding functions to start.js files. All right, see you in the next video.